Emergency alert. This is not a test. Immediate threat for residents of counties. Be wary of severe winds, lightning, severe rain, flash floods. Residents are advised to stay indoors. Please lock or bar all entryways into your house. Restrain from using any devices that emit light or loud noise. Please enter a room with no windows. Effective indefinitely. Issued by the National Weather Service. This is the message I was greeted by in the middle of an episode of The Big Bang Theory in my living room. Frozen halfway through a fork full of Kraft mac and cheese, I sat bowled upright and turned around to look out the window. The sky, as I thought, was crystal clear. A few clouds, but nothing crazy. No rain, no thunder, and nothing. Confused, I turned off the TV, erasing the alert from the screen. My two dogs came walking over to me and I patted them on their heads. One of my dogs, the other's brother, was shaking profusely from the buzzing noise that always shows up with amber alerts and the like. I left them in the living room and walked through my kitchen and out onto the front porch. My neighbors, too, were standing outside their houses, all looking at the sky in amusement. An immediate threat? It didn't seem like it. I thought as my phone started buzzing with the same tone. One by one, everyone else's phones started ringing. I should explain, I guess, that I've never experienced a severe weather warning for real, not once in my life. I suppose it should come as no surprise, seeing as I live in Oregon, of all places. I suppose maybe it was just a mistake, but just as the thought floated across my mind, I heard the siren. This is not a drill. Please enter your homes immediately. Do not go outside under any circumstances. Never the kind of guy to ignore higher authorities. I entered my house nervously, turned off all the lights on the above ground floor, and took my dogs into the basement with a sleeping bag, some food, my phone, a charger, some spare batteries, flashlight, and other essentials. I called my brother, who lives a couple blocks away, and asked him if he had gotten the message. He had. I considered saying we should stay together and wait out the storm, but then I figured we'd probably get in trouble for that, so I hung up got comfortable in my sleeping bag and started browsing Reddit. Eventually, I fell asleep, seeing as I was under stress and had woken up pretty early. When I woke up, I realized that I still didn't hear any rain. Seriously, there's nothing at all. More confused than ever, I decided to see if the alert had been called off. I turned on my phone and called my brother again. I went straight to voicemail, though. So I gave up. I decided to risk it and go upstairs. I had to squeeze between the door and the wall to keep my dogs from following me upstairs. But I won, and they stayed in the basement. I walked through my kitchen to the front door and looked out the window part of it, as I squinted to see outside in the dark. Strange, seeing it was was only 2 p.m., judging by my clock. The TV flickered briefly. I looked around at it and it flickered again, but this time every device on the ground floor flickered. Thinking little of it, I turned around and looked through the door again. Every house on the block had its lights turned off. Nobody was outside. Except for one teenage girl. A thin, short-haired girl wearing what looked like a pillowcase walked unsteadily down the street. Very slowly. Looking as though she is having some difficulty. I turned around, now extremely confused and worried. Got the dog's food bowls, which I had forgotten earlier. When I looked up, one of the houses, the... One diagonally across from mine, right next to the house across the street and to the left, had its lights on, and one of the windows broken. I shuddered and rushed back into the basement as the lights flickered intensely. I locked the door to the basement and sat on an old, tattered couch that I had brought down here. The basement is where I put everything I didn't have room for, so it's packed. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention something that may be worth noting. I live in a small town, a very small town, probably with a population of under 500 or less. As a matter of fact, it isn't even on most maps. We never have any news. We never have any scandals or anything. This is the first interesting thing that's happened, I think, since Mrs. lost her dentures to a raccoon. So it's possible this whole thing seems way worse than it is. Call me crazy, but until a few minutes ago, I was thoroughly enjoying myself. I love these scenarios, and my basement is totally secure, so I'm having the time of my life. Well, I was. 
until I decided to turn on the radio. What harm, what harm could it do? As long as I didn't turn the volume up high, right? I was surprised to find our local radio station still up and running. They were talking about the weather, so I listened hard for any news that I hadn't heard. There wasn't any. They were just as confused as us. Not wanting to listen to crazy pop music indefinitely, I turned to another station. This one was one I hadn't heard before. Could you give me the status of county? Over. No new developments. Over. Okay. Any fatalities? Over. What part of no new developments do you not understand? Okay. A squad car will be passing through soon to scan the area for the target. Over. Any ETA on that? Over. No. No, not yet. Over. Any word from HQ, Joe? Over. No, McLean. Not yet. Not since 013 first got out. Over. Well, let me know if they contact you. Over. At that point, I lost the signal. Well, not really, but the connection got so weak I could barely make anything out, they were saying. I figured I must have just found a police communication channel, and I had been left with no answers whatsoever. That was about 45 minutes ago, as of me recording this now. Guys, I, I don't know what's going on. Do, do any of you live near me? You'll know if you receive the warning. I, I'd say what county I live in, which ones were affected, but I don't know for privacy reasons. Anyway, I'll keep you guys updated, okay? Until then, wish me luck. Just a quick update before the major update. About five minutes ago, a car alarm went off somewhere to the right of my house. I'm too freaked out to go check it out, but I'll go up and see how it looks tomorrow morning. I'll update you then. Okay guys, hey again. I know I left off the last update at a bit of a cliffhanger, but I'm back now, and I want to say that so far, I'm okay. I have a lantern lit and enough food to last until tomorrow afternoon, maybe tomorrow night. The dogs are doing good, better than me in any event, and we're currently just lying low. I don't even want to risk going upstairs to get more food. Also, I don't really know what my thoughts are on the radio incident. If 013 wanted to get in, surely she could have by now. Unless she's like one of those old fashioned vampires who can't enter without permission. And I think my neighbor would disagree with that notion. No, oh, speaking of the radio, I did manage to tune in on the people that I've been listening to. I got better reception than last time, but I still don't have much more information to go by. Anyway, here's what I heard. Hello, hello. Officer McClellan? It's present. Over. McClellan, hey, uh, this is Sloan. Over. Sloan, oh, are you ever as sound for sore ears? Over. Nice to hear from you, too. Over. How's everything going over on your end? Over. Well, considerably better than things have been as of late. Do you think what James and the boss said is true? Over. And what about 013? I mean, I want to, um, so... I guess. Over. Everyone wants to believe, but do you actually believe it? Over. Well, I mean, if Kowalski thinks he has a lead... Man, fuck Kowalski. He's smart, okay? I'll give him that. Over. Look, I don't agree with everything Kowalski says or does. He's had good ideas and bad ones, sure. I guess he's got some obscure views on what should be done about 013, but it's not like he's the first one. Personally, I'm right in the middle. I mean, I'm not here out of choice, and we're messing with human life here. Maybe Kowalski's right. It's just a bit. Over. <sighs> Sloan, it's, it's not his opinion. 013, it's just... 
He's always sort of rubbed me wrong. Look, given the chance, I'd probably quit this shitty job and do something else. I don't really care what happens to Zero Thirteen, but Kowalski, come on. Does he need to be here? D does he? he? He can get by totally unemployed. He's got money, he so why is he sticking around? Over. Sean, stop. Sorry. McClellan, you're making some dangerous accusations here. I can't help but get the feeling that has something to do with, uh, 002. Yeah, Sloan. I'm telling you. Kowalski rigged the 002 experiment. McClellan, get it together. Th sir, Kowalski's a perfectly fine man. I don't know why you have it out for him. I can't tell you that because we're friends, right? Besides, I didn't call to talk about Kowalski. I called to ask if you were going to investigate the radio disturbance on... Street. Over. Well, yeah, but I don't see the point. 003 is causing disturbance all over the place. None of them particularly close to where she is. Over. Yeah, but maybe somebody's been listening to us. I mean, usually 013 sends out larger disturbances than that. You never know. And that's the last thing we need. Over. Okay. I get it. Over now. Bye. Over now. Now I'm a bit concerned. Because they mentioned a radio disturbance on my street, which could very well have been caused by either me or a neighbor listening to them. Also, if there's one thing I learned from that conversation, it's that 013 isn't the only one in existence. Seeing as they mentioned a 002. Calling 013 an anomaly, like in the previous update, or the one before that, whichever it was, makes me think that she has something the others are missing. I've noticed that the weather's calmed down somewhat. I haven't heard anything but light rain coming from up above. And judging from that, as well as the conversation between Sloane and McClellan, I think this all might be called off soon. I think 013 is going to be found today. I really do. I'm really tired, even though it's early, because I barely slept last night. So I'm going to take a small nap. I'll wait to post this when I get up. Okay, so I just woke up about two hours, maybe three hours later, and the alert on my phone is now all weird. Like, it has letters randomly capitalized every now and then, which some kind of cliche ransom letter. I'm just assuming it's a glitch or something, but it, still, it's a bit weird. It's a little later now, and I'm officially out of food, except for the three granola bars and the single sleeve of saltines. Oh, and one water bottle. This basement smells like dog waste and B.O., and I want out. Guys, the, the alert changed again. Now it's totally empty, except for the headline. Emergency alert. And a URL. I have a really bad feeling about it, seeing as it's probably a virus, but practically squatting in a basement with just dogs to talk to, a phone that can only fully charge once more given the status of my power banks, and storing waste in Ziploc bags, I decided to just say fuck it and click the link. It took me to a weird site, it's just a black screen, totally black except for a, a Google bar thingy and the, some small white text. To me, it looks like a transcript. Here's what it says. The 013 experiment. Notes. Subject is very uncooperative. Subject refuses to eat. Subject seems to display unique traits. Possible anomaly. Below that are two audio files. Day one. Good evening, young lady. My name is Professor Whitfield. Born in hell. Now, now, let's not get off to a bad start. Let us try again. My name is Professor Whitfield. And yours? Fuck you. Dear, dear. They did tell me you weren't very cooperative. It's a shame. But I suppose I haven't brought you in here to sip tea. I hear tell that you're a very special young woman. And not in the way that every child is special. No. You can do things with your mind, can't you? My mind can do things with me. I can't control it. Keep me here any longer and my mind may just slip over your throat. Shocker. Stop! Stop! 
up. My name is Professor Whitfield. And yours? Elizabeth Keller. Perfect. Now, I would love to stay and chat, but I will allow you to get acquainted with your new quarters. Let me out. Let me out. Let me go. Open the door. Open the door. Day two. My hello, child. Elizabeth, was it? Elizabeth, yes. So it was. Were you by any chance related to Miss Annie Keller? No. No relation? None. Any notable relations? No. None? I already told you. No, you bastard. I advise you not to take that kind of tone with me. Ah! Why are you keeping me here? I have my reasons. Children like you aren't easy to come by now. Now you've been known to cause thunderstorms upon getting angry, correct? Yes. If kept in the right type of structure, may be contained, but I digress. Anyway, tell me, Miss Keller, are you familiar with me? Do you know who I am? Yes. You're the head of local police. That's what the people have been told. <laughs> no, you see, we aren't police. This town has no true police. Now, the people who run this town and enforce the law work for me, but they are no police. We're the Mew Foundation. That stands for Mentally Engineered Weapon. Have you figured out why you're here? Why can't you just let me go? Am I going to die in here? Relax, relax. The twelve before you faded very well. I don't see why you should be any different. Everything after that was corrupt. I think maybe they found out it was leaked and tried to erase it, but how and why did it leak in the first place? I, I can't help but think it was 013 in some bizarre attempt to expose the Mew Foundation. Anyway, I'm gonna go now. I'll keep you guys posted until the next update. Okay, see ya. Hello everybody, welcome back to my special hell. It's been raining a lot lately, rain and thunder. The wind is really howling something terrible, but as of yet, I'm alright. I haven't heard anything from the cops, who, according to some users, who told me the cops no longer use radio channels to communicate, maybe something else, like an independent organization, like storm chasers or something, but chasing escaped mental patients instead of storms. Anyway, me and the dogs are doing fine at this point. Nothing really transpired since the last update. I know, I know. I really should stop going upstairs, but today, I have to. I'll be real sneaky, okay? But I need to. I only have enough food for today, and I guess I could stretch it to tomorrow if I really rationed it, but honestly, I'd prefer to get it over with now. Huh. The lights just flickered. I mean, well, sure, they've been doing that a lot lately, but that time it lasted a while. Anyway, I checked the alert on my phone again, but nothing about it was different. I recently ran upstairs to get some towels and plastic bags to deal with the dog's defecation, but I didn't see the girl, who I'm assuming is 013, who I'm just going to refer to as 013 for now. My neighbor's door was closed again, but that's the only thing that's changed. As I'm writing this, I can hear a siren, not one I've heard before, closer to a police siren than anything else, but still a bit different. I considered going up to check it out, but you guys would kill me, right? I really hope this all ends soon. I only have, like, bread and ramen that I have no way of cooking safely. Potato chips, saltines, water, and fucking salad dressing out the ass. So, if this goes on for more than two or three more days, I'll have to eat Pete or Mabel. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'd sooner eat my own calf. By the way, I did Google my area. There was nothing in the news about it whatsoever, which is weird, seeing as our town wasn't entirely off the map. I called a few of my neighbors last night. None of them picked up. 
too, and went straight to voicemail. I chatted with my brother. Things are no better by him. I can't put this off any longer. I'm going upstairs to get some food. I'll take my phone with me. All right. Just putting some food in some bags. I crawled past the window, of course. When I came up here, the rain started coming down even harder. I can hear some of the neighbors' doors opening and closing. The shutters shook in the distance. The shutters of the window in my living room are open. I guess Miss 13 could see in if she wanted to, but no way in hell I'm fixing that shit right now. Back downstairs. I'm gonna try to contact the cops again. So far, I'm getting no signal. Okay. No luck. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm getting something, but it's really faint. Going. Check. Street. It's my street. Okay. Careful. Ready. All times. Okay. Let me know how it goes. When? Over. Over. That's all the legible phrases I could get before I lost the signal. But now I know someone's coming down the street. Also, you guys have told me that cops don't actually say over at the end of each sentence group. I have two theories. One being that they just don't know that. The other being that they're trying to make themselves seem like cops, so that if someone, unauthorized, finds the channel, then they'll think they're listening to the cops. I don't know if these people are trustworthy, or if I should be concerned about someone coming down my street. But so far they haven't entered any houses. So, even if they are paranoid Nazi spy demons, I should be good. I don't honestly think Zero Thirteen has any malicious motives. She doesn't seem to be the kind of test subject that lives in a five-star room. So, she may very well be fleeing for her own safety. But I do know that she is undeniably irrefutably dangerous. Another thing, a lot of people seem to be picturing this girl as um, Elle from Stranger Things. However, when I said she was a teenager, I didn't mean 13-ish. I meant anywhere from 16 to 20-ish. And by short hair, I didn't mean she had a buzzed head, just short hair and a choppy, shorter fringe. Not like an emo fringe, just, it's just unevenly cut. The radio just turned on. Open the door. I guess, I don't know, this, this is getting weird as hell. It just turned on. I don't know if that was the cops or 13 or someone else, but I'm fucking scared. Were they talking to me specifically? My dogs are staring at it now. It... Open the door. It just said it again. It sounds so fucking calm. What the f What the hell? My dogs are barking. Okay, but, okay, guys, this is like five minutes later now. I just got my dogs to stop barking, but they're still growling. That was definitely loud enough for people to hear, maybe even through the rain and everything. I'm a bit more calm and collected now, but I'm holding a big-ass kitchen knife just in case. This crazy-ass psychic girl is going to come here, and I'm going to fucking die, guys. Okay, it's two hours later now. She hasn't come in, so I think I'm okay. I almost broke the radio to stop her from using it. I might need it to stay posted on what the cops are doing. But now the power's out. I can only use my lantern and flashlights to light up the room now. I have to use my phone with data. I'm not going back upstairs. Not a fucking chance. My phone probably won't last very long on just the power banks, guys. This might be it. I might actually fuck this time if I die tonight. My friends know my usernames, some of them. At least the guys promised me that... Promise me if you're one of the people who knows who I am, please tell my family that I love them and that I tried. I'll try to update you guys soon. Until then, assume I'm alive. Hmm, might be wishful thinking, but I, I don't know how this is going to end. Until I can make a full update, I'll make small ones on here. Wish me luck, guys. I'll need it.
Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about the wait. I know a lot of you have been waiting to hear more about my current situation. I have, however, been reading and responding to some of your comments. I have some new insight as to what may be going on. I still have access to the police radio channel, but I haven't had a good signal since the first attempt, and I haven't tried looking at it very much. About an hour ago, however, I did get into it, and this is what I heard. Officer Jones, you there? Over. I am. Uh, who's this? Over. It's Officer Sloan, sir. Do you have any intel from HQ? Over. I'm afraid not. I just got done talking to McLean and that SOB Kowalski. Any word over on your end? Over. Now since the last broadcast, about 45 minutes ago, last thing I heard was about the footage of the wreck. Over. Yeah, I suspect there's much. How are you holding up, Sloan? Over. All right. <laughs> All things considered. And you? Jones? Over. Well enough. No. I'll tell you, though. If 013 doesn't turn up fast, I might just end up like poor old Officer Brown, with my brains scattered on the ceiling. Over. Rest his soul. Over. Jones and Sloan went silent for a good ten seconds at least. Well, I guess I better get in touch with Kowalski. I put him in charge of examining the wreck footage. Wish me luck. Over. Yes, sir. Over. Sloan disconnected, and Jones waits a minute to call Kowalski. Kowalski? This is Jones. Over. Jones, hey, uh, I'm starting on that wreck footage. I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary yet, but time will tell. Over. Right. Look, Kowalski, I need you to focus. This is one of the weirdest parts of the whole ordeal. Uh, think about it. A cop crashes into a telephone pole in a deserted road in broad daylight. Over. With all due respect, it might have been an honest mistake. I mean, come on, it's pretty dark out with the disturbances we're trying to prevent 013 from releasing. Over. Look, we all know 013 is an anomaly. That's nothing new, but I'm telling you, either he found her and she got the upper hand, or... Let's just say I'm not ruling out suicide. Over. Whatever. Hey, let me get back to... The signal cut out. Also worth noting, the emergency broadcast I had received has now been updated to say that the emergency services have been suspended indefinitely, and leaving one house is punishable by law. Also, I took a look at the format of the broadcast and the interface of it. It isn't one that I've recognized before. In my confused state, I had been unable to tell. It's weird. But what hasn't been lately? I've been doing alright as of late, but I'm still paranoid about every sound I hear. As I started recording this, the wind picked up, and I can hear rain hitting the roof. It's getting harder by the minute. It looks like the weather warning wasn't entirely bullshit, huh? So I took my dogs up to the shower to do their business, as one of you suggested. I haven't gone upstairs yet, but I have nothing else to report, and I don't want to give you a half-assed update, so I'm going to take a gander out the window and document what I see as I see it. Okay, I'm heading upstairs right now. I think I'll take a box of Samoas down with me when I go back down. Hell, I'll take a box of Samoas and Thin Mints. Desperate times call for desperate measures. As maybe you can tell, humor is how I deal with stress. Damn it. Unhealthy, I know, but yeah, whatever. It is what it is. All right, I'm going up to the window. I don't see anything, but the neighbor's window is still very broken. The street is very dark, and all the lights are very off. Now it's raining, though. The streets are overflowing with water, almost, and the first flash of lightning thunder. The storm's right over us. It's right over our little town. The girl doesn't seem to be outside anymore, but I'll be keeping my eyes open. It's weird. After the lightning strike, the sky's lighting up every few seconds. Like I said, 
Nobody around here, including me, is very informed on severe weather, seeing as it never comes our way, but I'm pretty sure that's not common. Okay, I just... What? What the... What the fuck? But... Okay, the neighbor's... The neighbor's door just opened. The one with the broken window. It's... Nobody's there, though. This must have been the wind. I hope he noticed. Come to think of it, maybe I should give him a call and see how he's doing. We used to talk sometimes. After all, it would be nice to hear from someone going through the same shit. Wait, wait. I can... Oh, I can see him. He's lying on the floor. Oh, shit. The, the girl just came out of the door. I, I'm ducking down under the window. I don't think she saw me. Uh, I'm going to peek out the window just, just to check. Okay. Now she's walking down the street. She's... She just passed my house. I don't know why she'd willingly go outside in weather like this, in a scenario like this, but whatever. I called my brother. He hasn't gone upstairs in a while. Good thing, too. He said he heard a crash from one of the neighbor's house a little while earlier, but nothing too loud. It's nothing loud enough to cause serious concern. Weird. As I'm recording this, my dog looks worried. <laughs> Without them, I'd probably have lost my mind by now. Without you guys, too. It's nice having people to talk to in a time like this. Hmm. Maybe they have to go do their business again. It's risky, though, seeing as my bathroom is upstairs. I'm gonna take them upstairs, but I'll make sure to bring my phone with me. Okay. We are in the bathroom. Nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, they're done. And we're going back downstairs. I'm gonna duck past the window, though. Come to think of it, I should really invest in some blinds for that window. Oh, fuck! I just got down to the basement, but as I passed the window, I, I saw her pass it, too, on the other side. I don't think she saw me, but holy fuck! Why is she out there just wandering around like that? By now it's crossed my mind a couple times that she, she is 013, and from this close, that pillowcase looks more like a hospital gown. Sh shit, guys, I, I phoned the cops, but I don't even know the number. I need to go. I'll update you soon. So, until then, just assume I'm alive. Update. Okay, guys, so... By now, I figured out that 911 takes you to the police. But I also remembered the bit about the emergency services being suspended. So, there's that. Hey guys, I know I haven't updated in a while, but a number of things have happened. Now, seeing as this all happened before I was able to update, and... The events were too big to fit into just a small update. I decided to just compile them all into here. I doubt there will be any more updates after this because I definitely feel like this is all going to be over soon, but until this all ends, I'll keep you guys posted. I should let you know that this post won't be as outwardly scary as the other ones, seeing as some light has been brought to the situation in recent days, but it should be quite interesting for those who have made it this far. Let's just say I have a few more answers now. There hadn't been sound from outside for more than a couple hours when I decided to go upstairs again. My power's still out, and my phone battery isn't getting any fuller, but I don't think I'll be in my basement much longer. I haven't considered letting the dogs outside, but I'm not rushing into anything. I went upstairs and looked out the window. The girl I'd been seeing was crouched on my front steps, wet from the dying rain, and extremely thin from malnourishment. I still felt a shudder travel up my spine upon seeing her, but... I felt she had lost some of her ability to fill me with fear. I now know who she was, assuming I could trust the transcript from the alert message. I knocked three times on my front door. Through the glass part of the door, I could see her stand up and turn around. She looked at me, silently pleading, and I did what you've been warning me against doing this whole time. I let her in. She walked in without saying a word, walked past me, and looked around. Hungry? I asked and I noticed my voice was dry from barely speaking for several days. She turned to me and nodded. Knowing full well I didn't have much to spare, 
I opened a cabinet and took out a bag of marshmallows. She tore it open and began eating it faster than I could imagine. Funny, I didn't even like marshmallows. That's why I never took them downstairs. I filled a cup of water from the tap, an ability I previously forgot I possessed, and put it in front of her. She downed it in one gulp. Did you change my alert message? I asked. She nodded. Have you been hearing what I have on the radio? She nodded again. They aren't cops. I noticed that her voice was raspy. She probably rarely spoke. I figured. Are you trying to run from them? Yeah. Okay, I said. You can stay here for now. Do you have a house? No. A family? She shook her head. I walked over to the door and closed it. Did you kill my neighbor? I asked. He tried to hurt me. I didn't want to. I told him to stop, but he had a shotgun. So you went to him for help? Okay. How long have they been keeping you locked up? She shrugged. It was 2014 when they got me. Two years. Shit. Okay. I can help you, but I don't know if these people work for the government or not. But if they don't, I can have them arrested and put away for good. If they do, I don't know. I'm just about out of food, I said. I'm going to go get some for my neighbor. He won't need it anymore where he's going. Okay. And help yourself to whatever. I left my house, despite every warning I had been given, and went across the street. I pushed open my neighbor's door and went inside, stepped over his body. His neck was turned at an awkward angle, a shotgun lying next to him. I picked it up, cleared the chamber, and put the shells in my pocket. I decided to keep it in case the Mew Foundation came knocking. I stuffed the big pouch in the front of my hoodie, full of food, and left, placing a washcloth over his eyes. When I got back, 13, or, oh, sorry, um, Liz, Betty, Beth, Lizzie, or Elizabeth, I, I was passed out on the couch. I put a blanket over her and put some old clothes next to her. Then I locked the door and went back downstairs with my dogs. I turned on the radio and waited to get a signal from you. It only took about five minutes. Kowalski. Yes? Over? This is McLean. Sloan and I are headed to... Street. Wanted to check the status of the radio disturbance examinations. Over. Well, they're coming from... Uh, I want to say house number... Over. Interesting. We'll be sure to pay a visit. Looks like this may be finally over. Over. I don't know. What if... 13 escapes and gives the others ideas. The entire project could be compromised. Over. They know nothing about it. These clones are idiots. Kowalski. Except 13. She's an exception, but that's probably because she's from a different person. At least from what I gather. I never saw 14 through 26. Over. They're not idiots, McClellan. Just uneducated. Over. Yeah, you say that. What about two? Strange things went on. Huh? That one, though, and was the dumbest of all. Say what you want, I have my own opinions. I happen to think the clones should be treated fairly. And two, that was unfortunate to say the least. Over. I'll say. Didn't two, like, die? Just out of the blue, right? Colin, what are you getting at? Over. Nothing. Over. Hmm. Hey, what happened that day, if I remember correctly? You got knocked out for a little while. Over. I was working with two. He came up behind me and hit me. And then everything went black. Over. Okay. Kowalski, why are you here, man? You don't need this job. Over. I made a promise to Whitfield. I can't break it. Over. What kind of promise? You didn't have to be here at first. Over. Irrelevant, McClellan. It's over and out. After that, the channel went silent. I went back upstairs to find 13 awake. Did you ever meet McClellan, Sloan, Kowalski, Jones, any of those? I asked. All but Jones. Do you know why they hate Kowalski so much? I asked. Because of the 002 experiment, she said. Did he mess it up? I asked. She furrowed her brow. No, she said. Well, they think so, but I know what really happened. Because I stole the master file. Do the other people on the radio know about it? I asked. Just Kowalski. Because in a way, he's just like me. How so? Well, 
take a look at the file. It has the names of all the people used for the cloning process. She took a black binder out of her shirt and handed it to me. Here. I opened it up. On the front page, there were four columns. In the first column, 0, 1 through 6. Second, 7 through 12. 13, she was the only one not adopted from another person. Fourth, 14 through 26. At the top of every column was a name. Michael Kowalski, Sean, Elizabeth Keller. Henry, withheld out of respect, this is the boy who drowned and was declared later on. Kowalski was the person used to make 001-006. Elizabeth said, was? During the 002 experiment, he was attacked from behind. 002 killed him and assumed his job, his life, everything. He said the dead one was him, 002, and not the original. I said so, but nobody believes me, and I didn't care. Why would I? Kowalski's almost as dangerous as me, but I think he's like-minded. Are you okay? I gulped. My name is Sean. As of now, we're waiting on the edge for McClellan and Sloan to arrive. Me holding a shotgun in hand. Elizabeth holding her powers in her mind. Until next time, wish us luck. Update. Upon further studying the book, I found that it names everyone in the town as pending cloning subjects. Apparently, in this town, they must take samples of your blood at birth or something. We're all ready to be cloned, but only a few already have. Liz and I have been talking. She knows it. I know it. This can't work forever. The people at Mew will never stop looking for her until she's found. Sure, I could take care of McClellan, Sloan, Jones, and Kowalski if necessary, but I'm certain they have more manpower and who knows. The other experiments might not be as kind as Liz. We just gave the radio a try. It's nothing much, but we now have a time frame for the arrival of the officers. Kowalski. Sloan here. Sloan, hey, have you and McClellan left yet? Over. Yeah. Been there about two hours? Over. I just left as well. Uh, I'll be there in one and a half. Over. Well, tell us what you have and have not searched when we get there. We need to shut this down today. Over. And Jones, has he left yet? Over. Not yet. He probably won't be there for another three or so. Anyway, take care. Over now. The dogs are safely locked away in my basement for now. But I'm trying to convince my brother to take them to his house until things blow over. I've told him about Liz being a normal person. He didn't believe me at first. But I think he's coming around. Right now, she's wearing a gray hoodie of mine over jeans and dark red converse and a white marble t-shirt with a black venom insignia. I don't think they'll be able to identify her without giving her a second glance. A lot of you have been asking about the gun I found across the street, and the closest lookalike I found on Google Images was a Remington 870. I checked around my neighbor's house for more shells like some of you suggested, and I found about four more, plus two more full power banks. I didn't do a very thorough check, because we were on a bit of a deadline right now. Okay. My brother just got back to me. He'll take the dogs. He's still confused, but he'll totally back me up if I need him when officers friendly, smiley, and joyful show up. I'm not worried about running out of shells. If need be, Liz can probably make their heads explode or something. But I'd rather she didn't have to because that would be difficult to explain to the authorities, especially when the authorities know about 13 and are the ones I'm getting ready to fight. I really can't see more than one update after this. I I think today it will all be over. I hope Liz makes it out okay, but it'll be a hell of a lot of work to keep them from her. If she's to be free, either everyone in Mew must die, or she'll have to go on the run for real. In Mexico, or maybe Canada. Canada's closer. Although, maybe if Whitfield dies, the others will leave her alone. I don't know. 
It's been about 45 minutes since we listened on the radio. Kowalski should be here in 45 more. Liz had a bright idea, too. What if we left a note for him? We found some sidewalk chalk in the basement. We took a look out on the street and wrote 002 in large letters. When the others show up, either we can wash it off with the hose or with some rain, courtesy of Liz. I think it's a good idea. What if Kowalski wants to fight just as little as we do? Okay, 15 more minutes have passed. I'm getting really anxious. I think we should do one more sweep for supplies. Okay, so we went back across the street and picked up a machete and a small revolver. I put the revolver in my pocket for now. I might give it to Liz, even though I doubt she'll need it, and put the machete on my back. I don't know why all the other neighbors are being so quiet. Should I give them a warning? I asked Liz if she killed them too. She said no. My brother showed up and got the dogs. Holy fuck, Sean! What? I asked him. You aren't enlisting in the military. You don't need a fucking arsenal. You want one? Fuck no! I'm serious, I said. You might need it. These people are going to check all the houses on the block, probably. I'm good, he said. So you're the one who kept walking around outside? Yes. What's going on? Are we involved in some messed up government experiment or some shit? Well, frankly, yes. What's going on? Are we involved in some messed up government experiment or some shit? You got my R back? Of course. But I better not go to jail for this, buddy. Jim, calm your ass, motioning for him to calm down. Just take the dogs to your place, maybe come back here and be ready for a fight. Okay. Okay, hurry up, I said, as he ran into the basement to get the dogs. A few minutes later, he was pulling out of the driveway. Your brother seems nice. He is, he is an ass, but you'll get used to it. Fifteen minutes before go, he came back. I handed him the machete when he refused the revolver. I offered the revolver to Liz, but she said she wouldn't need it. I agreed. I have my kitchen knife, too, in my other pocket. We all had one of those, actually. Also, I forgot to mention that the revolver had a full cylinder. Okay. In five minutes, Kowalski should be passing by. I'm really nervous now, but it should be okay. I don't think he'll be a problem. Okay, Kowalski showed up. I'm looking through the window at him. He's looking at the chalk message. He looks like he's getting worried. Nervous. Confused. Whatever. I just saw me. Okay, I'm back. I went outside with the shotgun in hand and he took several steps back. His hands up. I questioned him a little and he admitted to killing the real Kowalski. Then Liz came out. We checked him. Took a handgun off him. No try to find out what kind and took him into the basement to tie him up we he's currently sitting across from us bound and gagged my brother we just pale as a sheet a guy. he muttered I'm probably we about to kill a few more a guy. I said so buckle up I noticed the insignia on his lapel Mew written in white against the dark grey fabric of his shirt I decided to go wait behind my dead neighbor's house for McClellan and Sloan Liz my brother Jim I don't know if I said his name yet. Waited at the house. Okay, they're here. They just got out of the car, but there's four of them. McClellan is a guy of average height, brown hair, moderately built. Sloan is a slightly short woman with black hair and a ponytail. And the other two are both tall and average built. One with blonde hair, one with black, both male. One of the big guys just came my way. Sloan and McClellan are walking in my house's general area. The other big guy is walking down the street away from me. I'm going to put my phone down. Okay, uh, I, I just shot the guy. Um, he came around and saw me, and before he could take out his gun, I shot him with the shotgun. McClellan and the other big guy were both in houses, but Sloan was outside, so she, she saw him fall down. Although, they probably all heard the shotgun. My ears ringing. I stood up, got ready to run, shaking from the fact that now the man's blood metaphorically was on my hands. She caught up with me as I was running. I shot her in the thigh. She fell over, but, but sat up and started shooting at me. 
and the big guy was nowhere to be seen, so I crouched down behind the nearest house, slow, crying out in pain. Why? She asked me, looking at me angrily. You can't have 13, I said. I know what you're doing in that place. I'm a police officer. Then why does your shirt say Mew? And why do you keep saying over on the radio? All cops say over. I'm giving you an out, I said. Stay quiet, lay low, and let me take care of it. She was looking behind me. I turned around as big guy number two came around the corner of the house with his gun held out. I took out my knife and stuck it in his shoulder. He fell over and I got on him, sticking it between his ribs. I don't want to do this, I said. He fell limp, and I looked slow. If you can't call him off, nothing can be done. If it's something that can be stopped, then stop it. Through a radio, I heard a voice. This is Professor Whitfield to Officer Sloan. I'll be there shortly with Jones. In due time, over. I took the shotgun and hit her head with the barrel, and knocked her unconscious, my head swimming. Guys, this is the last one. For some of you, this is good news. For me, it is too. A lot has happened since the last update, which I admittedly ended quite abruptly. To make things easier, I'll pick things up from where I left off. Sloane's walkie-talkie continued to crackle after she slumped over on the ground, but no more words came through. I took out my phone and called Jim. Sean! Hey, I just happened? killed two of them, man. <laughs> One of them's out cold. Fuck, what did you do that for? I didn't have a choice. They jumped me, man. I... Yeah, but that's not why I called. Tell Liz that Whitfield's on the way. Fuck. Just tell her. How's Kowalski doing? All right, considering he's tied up. Okay. Stay put. I'm going to see if I can find McClellan. I hung up the phone and put it in my pocket, strafing around the house my eyes scanning for any sign of McClellan. Someone called from somewhere to my left. S must be McClellan. I remained silent and looked around for the source of his voice. I estimate that we'll be there in 15 minutes. Over, Whitfield said through Sloan's radio. Fuck, I muttered. McClellan repeated. I sprinted across the backyard and crouched behind a bird fountain. I could hear his voice getting closer. Finally, I could see him nervously inching closer to me. I stood up to move and his eyes locked onto mine. He drew his pistol and fired. The bullet whirred right by my shoulder and I ran, cocking the shotgun and firing in McClellan's direction. I missed and he came running at me. I cocked the gun again and again and fired. Fuck! Stop running, you fucker! Get out of here. I know what you're trying to do here. Oh yeah? And what will you do about it? Kill me? Kill fucking Whitfield? <laughs> Good luck with that one, pal. What did you do to Slaw? She's unconscious, but alive. At least until you put down your fucking gun. You're one to talk. Drop it. I lowered my gun, and he lowered his. You're treading on thin ice, prick. If you don't stop, you're gonna have to face Whitfield in the flesh. And you'll find he isn't as understanding as me. Now, where are Maloney and Schmidt? Kowalski. Big guy? Dead. Fuck. Kowalski, too. I'm sorry. They drew on me. How do I know you're telling the truth? McClellan said, raising his gun again. I know where 13 is, but I won't tell you, because I know what's going on in that place. I read the transcript of the first couple of days 13 was in there. The fuck did you get that? You got put on that bullshit emergency alert message. If I have to guess, she put it there to discredit you guys. Whatever you read, you have to believe me. Zero 013 is dangerous, okay? Well, it's not like you aren't. Look, kid, put your gun down. I won't hurt you, but you need to let me know where 013 is. I'm not dropping my gun, but she's in there. I pointed to my dead neighbor's house. For real? You're not playing me? No, I'm being honest. Okay. He turned around to enter the house. Okay. I'm trusting you here. I nodded. Be careful, man. I know what I'm doing. While his back was turned, I quietly started backing away. You know what? I'm not going to turn my back on a guy with a gun in his hands, so why don't you put that shit down, huh? Okay, I said, dropping the shotgun. 
Thank you, McClellan said in exasperation. Now you stay put so I don't have to do something rash. Yeah, I said, continuing to back up. You hear that? He asked, turning around. Hmm? What? A car. I listened for the noise in question, and I found it. Tires on gravel. I turned around and saw a car pulling into the driveway three houses down from my house. That's probably Whitfield. I advise you to act on your best behavior, kid, else you're going to have a bad time. McClellan, said a man from the passenger seat of the car as he opened the door. Who's the kid? Civilian. Killed the others except Sloan. Oh, fuck. Christ, McClellan, you're not cuffing him? What's going on here? Whitfield asked, exiting the car. I studied Jones and Whitfield. Whitfield was tall, with long gray hair and slightly wrinkled face. Jones was tall as well, but with short cropped hair and a strong jaw. He's saying this kid killed the others, boss. Listen, he says 013's hiding over there. He pointed to the house that I had tipped him off on. Whitfield closed his eyes, focusing, it seemed, on something. No, he said. What? Jones asked. You lying? No, I, I swear. Yes, you are, Whitfield said, opening his eyes and pointing to my house. I can sense her in the distance, and she's in there. Well, I thought she was in the other one. A voice came from off in the distance. Sloan, I thought. Fuck. Jones ran off toward Sloan's cries, and Whitfield and McClellan turned to face me. So, this kid says he knows about Mew. Does he? Whitfield asked. Well, something will have to be done, won't it? Give me his gun. Uh, sir, are you certain? Yes, McClellan. Now give me his gun. We don't have all day. The sweepers will be here soon to wipe out the town. The copies will be placed shortly thereafter. Now give me the gun. Sir, he may be of some assistance. You know, with the cloning. He knows too much to live, Whitfield said as my heart pounded in my chest. Pick it up and give it to me. McClellan swallowed hard and bent over to pick up the gun. He grasped it in his hand and stood up straight again. <sighs> Fine then. With a crash, my living room window exploded across the street, bursting to a million tiny fragments and sending long, jagged blades of glass soaring through the air. <laughs> One sliced through McClellan's neck, bringing him to his knees, and then his stomach, his blood spurted from the cut. Another lodged itself firmly in Whitfield's back. Well, Whitfield said as McClellan writhed on the ground. That's unfortunate. I bent down, pried my gun from McClellan's hands, trying to ignore the gurgling, and aimed it at Whitfield. I pulled the trigger. The birdshot erupted into his body. You insufferable child, he cried, turning to face my house as he pulled the glass out of his back. Escaping the lab will be the last thing you ever did. And you, he turned to me. Why don't you give me that gun? The bullet holes in his body were beginning to cover themselves. I fired again, this time his face met lead. Skin gone, giving way to bone and muscle. Give me that gun, you fuck! With a flick of his wrist, he beckoned the gun towards him, and it left my hands for his. Now, boy, you will meet your literal maker. He cocked the gun and prepared to fire. Thirteen ran out of my open doorway before the door hit the wall and reached for the telephone pole. It uprooted itself and went flying at Whitfield. It cracked onto his head and fell onto the ground in two pieces. He moved the barrel of the gun away from me and fired at Liz. Liz fell to the pavement in tatters. Fuck! I shouted. You asshole! <laughs> what? Did you really think you were going to win? You. Along with, let me guess, your brother and the runaway freak. Please. We have more power than you could ever dream of, and you owe everything you have, ironically, to us. We are responsible for your creation, every single one of you, all using the same original entity as a base. Even I owe everything to the immeasurable zero. I reached for my kitchen knife and found it in my pocket. I grasped it in a reverse grip and ran forward. Don't you understand? He asked, pushing me onto the ground with his mind. The story has no happy ending. He took my knife and threw it over his shoulder, blood still pouring from the holes in his head. I could kill you, you know, but I want you to see what I mean. You'll see the sweepers come through. You'll see how they erase this town completely. 
It will be as though it never existed. And then a week or so later, the clones will take over. Nobody will know the difference. I tried to sit up, but it kicked me in the chest and sent me onto my back. Goodbye, Sean. You will not be missed. Jones, get Sloan. Let's get out of here. The deed is done. I stood up only when their car was leaving the block. I limped towards my house, stepping over Liz's lifeless body and knocking on the basement door. Jim, Jim, get the dogs. We have to leave. People were starting to leave their homes when we left. I advised them to evacuate. Many did. The others, as of me writing this, are mostly dead or imprisoned. We've been on the road since we left. We managed to get into the next state. So far, we took the dogs and our necessary items, as well as a few small luxuries and stuff. We're both totally messed up from what happened, and we haven't even mentioned Liz once since leaving, but there won't be any more updates after this. This is the last one. Thank you all for staying with me through this. I know it fell apart towards the end, but it is what it is. I don't know what comes next for us, but it won't be easy. The alert was finally taken off my phone. For a while, that is. While sitting at the Wendy's parking lot and waiting for Jim to get back, I received another alert. This one was different, to say the least. Emergency alert. I'm informally issuing an emergency alert for the following counties. Citizens should be wary of all government officials. The town will be swept for survivors with clear memories of recent events. N nobody is safe here. I advise you all leave at once as soon as you can. Do not talk to any police officers if their uniforms are marked Mew. They are not police officers. Effective indefinitely. Do not go to <laughs> county. It's not safe there. I wish you all good lives. And bid you adieu. For as long as you remember this, assume I'm alive.